Debbie Birch and I'm with the Queen Anne's County Office of Tourism and we're here today with Pete Dillingham from the Midshore Symphony Society. He's the president to talk to us about um, Symphony on the Shore and upcoming event that's happening this month and then he'll tease you a little bit with one coming up in April. Hi Pete, welcome back. Debbie, thank you very much. Good to be here. So tell us first off, a lot of people might not, not realize that the um, Baltimore Symphony comes to the shore. Tell us a little bit about that and how that all works. Well, the Mitchell Symphony Society itself was formed uh, 44 years ago in 1970 oh, wow. with the idea of uh, providing an opportunity for audiences here on the Midshore to enjoy really world-class symphonic music. Right. And uh, a partnership was arranged with the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra that they would come for at least three, three concerts okay. each year. And so far that that has worked out very well. The Midshore Symphony Society itself is a nonprofit and all volunteer type of uh, organization. And we de uh, depend very heavily, of course, on donations, donations. from our uh, concert goers. And that's keeping us in business now. And 44 <laughs> years, you must be doing something right. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the, uh, the concerts this year are started off in October. And our next concert is coming up on the 25th of January, which is a Saturday. And it's really going to be a great concert because basically it's, uh, there are three pieces and it'll be an educational type of concert as we usually have. Mm -hmm. The our whole kind of uh, philosophy about it is to bring something new, bring something very familiar, you know, and, and always try to get the best concert artists that we can get performing. Okay. So, um, Two of the pieces are one is concerto uh, written as a commission by a Robert Bliss, okay. and that's subtitled Dumbarton Oaks. Now, some of you may remember that Dumbarton Oaks in Washington D.C. Like, is uh, up uh, on R Street in Northwest is uh, is really kind of the home of a lot of international conferences that go on okay. and diplomatic conferences. Well, that was the Bliss home and Stravinsky was a friend of Robert Bliss and this was on the occasion of one of their uh, wedding anniversaries. He commissioned this back in the mid-30s. Okay. And uh, Stravinsky uh, took on the commission and has written a really a very nice piece. Most people think of Stravinsky and they think of some very modern music and atonal and a variety of mm -hmm. other, but this is very melodic and very nice and it has a modern touch. As I say, it was written in 1937-1938 time period. The second piece is a Mozart symphony, and it also is a commission. It was done for one of his, uh, one of a family who gave him a great deal of financial support. Okay. Uh, the interesting part about this is that um, it was written at a very hectic or frenetic time in Mozart's life. He had just com uh, completed successfully the uh, abduction from the Seraglio is opera, and he was working on a couple of other pieces, and the Hofner family came to him and said, look, my son is being presented to the court. You and don't have we, anything we, we, else yeah, we, going on. We would like to have <laughs> you uh, write a symphony. And Mozart said, oh my Lord, you know, basically I'm trying to get ready for my marriage, which is taking place next month. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but his father and uh, the Hafners were very good friends and his father put a lot of pressure on him and so he pulled an overnighter and wrote oh, this geez. symphony and, uh, <laughs> and it turned out to be well but it, later on in his life and his musical career he improved on it and uh, you'll be hearing the latest uh, improvement uh, um, uh, by Mozart on this particular symphony. And this was written in 1787 or something like okay. that, around that period. But it's uh, it, but it's uh, it's also a great piece, but I think that the really the, the piece that everybody will really truly enjoy is the Brahms Violin Concerto, mm -hmm. uh, played by um, Jonathan Carney, who was the symphony concert master, okay. and um, and Jonathan is a big favorite of our audiences here on the shore. So it, uh, it's really going to be a great evening. And that's, that's a long piece, and so that comes after the intermission. The, con, uh, the Stravinsky is relatively short, uh -huh. kind of gets people in the mood, you know. <laughs> and uh, then we have the Mozart Hoffner Symphony number. 
and then uh, an intermission, and then the uh, Brahms uh, violin concerto. Okay. The, the Brahms violin concerto is absolutely gorgeous. It's, people probably recall that it's one of the big, uh, Beethoven, Brahms, and Mendelssohn have the big violin concertos. Right. They only wrote the one, and so uh, each. And uh, so it's very, very popular. And, and uh, those that are familiar with uh, Jonathan Carney's playing will know him as a really a, a consummate artist. I mean, oh, he's absolutely nice. fantastic. Yeah. And that's, that's um, Saturday, January 24th that? at Chesapeake College. Right. And at, at the Todd Performing Arts yep. Center and at 8 p.m. And at 8 p.m. And we'll put information up if people want information on tickets. Um, but I want to real quick just touch on your, so people know that one's coming up, but there's one coming up in April, um, April 25th. And they need to put that on their calendar too. Absolutely. That, that's that's going to be something new. We well, Last season we had a very successful presentation of the best of Broadway. Right. In which we brought two singers in, uh, male and female artists, and uh, sang all the favorites from a whole variety of different uh, big-time Broadway hits. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this from opera now. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, the people that are coming out now, there'll be 16 soloists, if I can remember correctly. Wow. And there will be scenes set for the... Uh, for the actually for the presentation for the singing mm -hmm. and uh, then there will be uh, music from Verdi and Puccini and a variety of other different uh, operatic uh, composers okay. and, and so it really, really ought to be a, a great evening. The group that's doing it uh, are not the big opera stars from the Metropolitan uh, Opera Company. Mm -hmm. These are people selected by Placido Domingo, and oh, really? uh, of who actually runs the Washington National Opera Company, and they will be the young artists who already have made it uh, some of what of a name for themselves. Okay, but uh, not having reached, they're just ready to break into the big time. So you're you know? getting them while so right before they become really big. You get them. You get them first. We get we get a lot of nice. young artists here who are actually fantastic. Um, we've had. I had a, a, a pianist two or three seasons ago who just turned 24 and she was absolutely spectacular. And we have the, con the concert uh, on, the, on the end of uh, January, we'll have a new uh, conductor for, he's the assistant conductor for the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. Okay. Name is Nicholas Hirsch. And uh, it'll of course be his debut on the shore, but at the same time, this is a young man who survived 210 applicants in competition for the job. Got the, that says so something he will right spend there. at least one year with uh, under the tutelage of Marin Alsop, the music director for the BSO. And there's a possibility if he wants to extend and the BSO wants him to extend, then uh, then basically there's that opportunity. Right, right. So he is really uh, you know, um, in the wings, so to speak, as really one of the major conductors of the future. So, so basically, people need to come see these shows because you have an opportunity to see a lot of really young talent, new talent, um, you know, before they go elsewhere and take off, um, they get to see them here first. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean that they're not any good. Exactly. I mean, they, they, I mean exactly. they're at the top it of what... Means, the, they're, right, they're, they're going to be going places, mm. but they're going here first. That's right, so. exactly. Wonderful. Okay, so it's Saturday, January 24th um, at the Chesapeake College. And again, we'll have your information up on the screen. And I want to invite you back so that uh, probably in a month or so, so we can hear more about the, the piece, the, the um, one that you're having in April with the opera highlights. I think that's going to be really... That sounds like a really nice evening. I'd like to get one more plug in. Okay. Uh, maybe it, uh, maybe two. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> you know, part of what I said in the beginning about our educational mm -hmm. mission, part of it, we have at 7 o'clock a pre-concert conversation with oh. the artistic director uh, at, um, at uh, the BSO. Okay. As well as the guest artist. Oh, and really? And so uh, Matthew Spivey, who is the vice president for artistic operations at the mm -hmm. BSO, will be participating, and also Jonathan Carney, who is the violinist and concertmaster, uh, will be participating as well. 
and he's wow. got a lot of anecdotes about you know not only his playing and his background but is really a musicologist of the first order so, so uh, anybody that gets a ticket to the show can come early absolutely oh wow so we okay. have we have a we have a growing group of people who get there early and there's an opportunity for questions and answers too so the okay. audience can participate in that respect and one of the things they might not want to know uh, might want to know about Jonathan is that he plays with a Stradivarius violin. Oh, wow. Of based in the late 1600s. And so that violin itself was worthy People of... People don't care about him. They just want to know about the violin. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's kind of an interesting note. And, uh, and, uh, and Jonathan is just a great storyteller. So, I mean, it's going to be very educational for Wonderful. those who could make it. And the other thing is that we are always looking for new board members okay. from Queen Anne's County. And uh, anybody who really would like to become a member and learn how do we do things here, learn our relationships between the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra and Chesapeake College and what it costs to put one of these things on, all of that uh, detail, then uh, we'd love to have you uh, either drop us a line, tell us your, give us your contact information, and, tell your, and send that to the Midshore Symphony Society, Post Office Box 417, Centerville, and 21617, two, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so there's a couple, of, you got both plugs in, so we're good. And like I said, we'll have you back to talk about the next show after this one, but everybody needs to come out on January 24th. They do indeed, so. and I'm really looking forward to this concert as well as the concert in, uh, in April. It's going to be very different, and it'll be very exciting for everybody. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Pete, for coming in. Oh, you're welcome, Debbie. Always a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.